Hello and welcome to the morning meeting. My name is Jimmy. His name is Matholomew and we are chatting about the company and we have an interview today. How goes it? It goes well. Um, yeah, special interview today coming at you a little less company talk than normal, but more so social media landscape as a whole. Yes. And I will be reading a poem after the interview concludes to wrap the show. That's right. Yes, that's what I'll be doing. It's called Dads and Daughters, so stay tuned for that. We got a, a little a little bit to talk about before we throw it to a chat with Rebecca. And yes. firstly, best opening wild card day in the history of this format, which is three years. Dang. How it's about good. that? Yesterday was good. Eight-hour stream, four good games. Mets won, Padres won. I like that, and I like that. Okay. Yeah. Astros lost. Yeah, like, well, that's personal. Personal. But business wise, you know, we have a Mets fan, a Padres fan, a Phillies fan. So we have representation this year. I've been very excited about that and, and changing the streams to like, this is a Mets stream. Watch with Jolly. This is a Philly stream. It's hard when you don't have hearts on the line. Yeah. So it's much more fun now. Yeah. And we'll do another Mets stream today. Um, do you care who the Yankees play next round? Is that a rooting interest of yours? Um, well, I don't know. The Orioles, uh, I thought their lineup was way deeper. Reagan's kind of shut them down. The Royals are top heavy, but they can run mm -hmm. and score. Mm -hmm. But they also play sloppy at times. So do the Yankees. But the speed scares me. But the Orioles can also do that. So they're, they're somewhat even. Uh, Reagan's being a lefty and him being able to pitch two times is uh, scary. So... I was saying Royals before, but the Orioles just didn't hit at all. So yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, like you said, we've got a we got a little bullet point here because uh, the, since the last time we spoke, we launched a website, an exclusive product area, right? Yeah. So, um, the question of the week, which br is brought to us by Super Lost, is about. That website. So before we get into the question, I want to tell you about Super Lost Coffee because it is a brand that was founded here in New York zoom City. In Slow mo zoom in on my face, Rob. Rob. Two friends who wanted to make a better coffee for both coffee drinkers and coffee farmers. Their subscription program is all about giving you the best coffee experience, and they have a wide variety of freshly roasted specialty coffee that can be delivered straight to your door with 30% off all coffee and free shipping. Their self-service platform gives you full control and they showcase a bunch of yes. I was no, just right. I was just right. being I was just I was just being moving. That's fine. They <laughs> showcase a bunch of coffee that's sourced from farmers that they trust, all locally brewed in Brooklyn. Free nationwide shipping with no minimums. Head over to the superlost.com. Head over to superlost.com and use code John boy for 30% off your super lost order. That's S U P E R L O S T.com promo code John boy. Thanks super lost. Uh, question of the week is coming from Jason ruse, the rooster 49 on Twitter. Uh, he said that he loves the website and can see the vision the company has with it. And he's very excited. Can you talk about why you went with your own website as opposed to other platforms like YouTube memberships or Patreon? Was it just having everything all in one place? Well, it's a Substack website, so it's not, so it's not fully like our own, like we're using uh, the platform Substack, which has a giant audience in and of itself that could lead to discovery and it already has like, I think Jolly's video got crazy amounts of views. The first one that like popped off like in its own audience. Um, yeah, we really wanted a website. We went deep into that. We talked about it a lot on here. Got a little, uh, uh, over our skis. First, I think that's a saying. Let me look it up. Over. Also foreshadowing to our guest, Rebecca, who got paralyzed in a skiing accident. Yep. Over our skis to do something too early or before you are prepared. Yeah. Uh, and we wanted, um, we were going to do an exclusive part of the website for um, kind of um, discounts, uh, chats, community building, also all this content we can't publish elsewhere because we don't have the room for it, all that. So this kind of uh, was the perfect opportunity. And it's been a great start to it, which I think everyone is excited about. 
You never know. I, I mean, I know that our, our base community is always very supportive. It's why we've been able to grow. Like the singular reason is because of the, the people that support us and have from the beginning. So we already have 26,000 subscribers. Um, we had a lot of the back catalog of the JJTV stuff that uh, we had to take down or we couldn't post. So we put that on there. And that got a big bump when I promoted that on John Boy Jake TV. Jolly's videos are there. There'll be some written word stuff on there. So you can go to the website. That's that's not, uh, you don't have to subscribe to that. It's free, which is great because we've never had a website where you can just kind of see everything we've got going on. And I think as we go, we can build this out more. Mm -hmm. um, what I really want to do, what was the question? Is the question just talk about this or is there a specific thing I have to answer? No, it's talk about this for the most part. He said, why did you choose this over sites, platforms like Patreon and YouTube memberships? Yeah, but I wasn't, I wasn't familiar with Substack, but our, um, our like leaders were Patrick's been working really hard on this. Amanda has been working really hard on this and they said, this is a great, this is what we want. It covers all the bases. So, and so far it looks awesome. It feels good. Johnboymedia.com. Uh, it gives us everything we wanted, yeah. And the ability to write written word pieces is going to be awesome. What I really want to do, Maddie, is I want to find the guy who left the comment on Captain's League. Was that a Captain's League comment when he, and like... Um, what comment are you talking about? It was like detailed scouting oh. of all the teams. Oh, oh, the really long one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a Captain's League comment. Was it the floorball draft? No, I think it was the one of the first ones, like ball and play. Oh. Right? Hmm. I think it was the very first Captain's League draft. Okay. Well We can find it. What I'm yeah, I'm gonna try and find it. And what I'm getting at is I wanna find the person who wrote that and commission them <laughs> to write a preview for Blitzball Battle Five. Because that's what I think we're, this is, I've wanted to be able to write written word for a while because when we're promoting Warehouse, it's hard to get into that world and YouTube has limited space and the algorithm is fickle. So you can't just like post like a, like a preview that gives you all the insight and it's not even the best place. Like if I want to get into a tournament, now everyone's different. If I'm watching a new cricket league or watching this or like an Olympic thing, uh, there, if there's a website that just breaks down the teams and characters and like storylines like bullet points or quick hitters. I will like peruse that. And it's got some videos on there. If it's like a, I got to click a 30 minute video. That's much harder to do. Uh, Cause people have always asked for that, but this kid or gal or guy kid can be both. So I don't know why I did that. This you, it's, I found it. Is it the draft for, no, it's a slap ball draft at one tournament in, it was like the grades, right? That's what you're talking yes. about? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slap ball? Yes. Where'd that be? Captain's League slap ball draft. Yeah, this kid wrote a crazy awesome comment. I like copy and pasted it. Uh, Name is Salisan Taurus. Yeah, I pinned it. All right. So, Salusan Taurus. Salasan Taurus. Is that words? I'm pretty confident the last word's Taurus. Like dinosaur, I need to find no, him. That's like, a and if anyone else out astrology. there likes writing and has been watching Warehouse Games forever, and you want to help out, I will. Now, okay, I don't. I, I said commission because I don't want to ask anyone to do something for free either. But there's probably not a, a giant budget for this because we could probably have someone do it. But this guy was awesome. Mm -hmm. Like this was thorough and it was hilarious. He got the tone of the warehouse. Like it was serious but stupid. Um, Jimmy becomes the first captain to select a goalie, and I don't love it. <laughs> uh, so I, that's what I want to do on the website is like a, a warehouse schedule, but also, hey, Blitzball Battle 5 is coming up. Here's everything you need to know before you watch, and it's just a little article with the GIFs and videos, and we can share that around. Um, so I'm excited about that for the website and excited for like being able to release like the 7th Heaven video. Uh because there's a lot of watching stuff we can do. And I'm really just talking about like my con there's content all across the board. Uh, that is good. But doing some of those watchings of shows that we like we did dating naked and it was hilarious and it didn't get uh, copyright claim. It just got age restricted. So it didn't do anything. But those clips 
are hilarious. So it feeds the, the, the social media machine and the people that, you know, that's not going to be a um, breath audience, which means like it's not going to go fetch all these new people. But like JJTV is a pretty heavy depth audience. Like they're in it with us. They like yeah. it. They like us. And that's the people who will support us. So like when we posted that this was here, we got, we saw a big tick up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The other feature is like chatting. Like, you know, just like I used to live tweet Yankees games all the time. It's not a fun place to do that because sarcasm isn't allowed. Mm -hmm. So if there's a place where at times I can live tweet Yankees games during the season next year, or just like other have live conversations where people understand the tone more. It's like a actual community of people that like, like us and are, and are, are not just out. To, yeah. Not that everyone's out to get us, but there are certain people that are just twist your words. So that's another feature that uh, they offer that we can do, yeah. which we've been doing. Yep. We so have. I'm excited about it. Me too. All right. Do you want to throw it to Rebecca? Yes, our guest today, Rebecca Colton. She is a star on social media. She's got tons of followers on TikTok and Instagram. She got paralyzed uh, after college in a ski accident and has, has, has been able to share her story in like wildly funny and dark humor video videos. Yeah. And she was interested in coming in and talking about social media and I was... Crack, I crack, I went, I'd go to her bridge, crack up a ton. So I was like, yeah, I'd love to chat and hear more about this. So this is Rebecca who came in and chatted with us about her story. I binged your Instagram for a long time and then uh, was just laughing a lot. And then there's this weird thing where I'm like, this is genuinely very funny. And then there's part of me that, you know, you get all the emotions around it uh, of like, oh my God, but this is sad or I'm am I a part of the joke am I not part of the joke and then you keep watching it I'm like no this is very funny and we're all part of the joke with you of just like the humor my favorite one was with your brother when you said guess oh what was it guess which one of us where are they now yeah where are they now siblings yeah. where are they now just uh just like a quick punch to the gut of like oh my god that's really funny yeah I love that one but I'll ask you about everything but how quick did like the humor come for you after the accident and getting to like that voice on Instagram that you've found now? I would say it took a little while because at first then my videos were like, just like educational, like, Oh, this is how I drive my chair. This is how I paint. And then eventually I would hear like a funny sound. I'm like, let me just try like putting this out there and seeing what happens. And then the responses were really good. Although with Instagram, my first post, after my accident, was it just a picture of me in like my power chair? No one really had seen me yet or what I looked like besides close friends. I just made the caption, still didn't get COVID, <laughs> that, which is true. And people love that. But like on TikTok, it, was, it probably took a few months before I started to like get into the humor part of it. So for anyone that just joined us, if we back up, can you just, I know you probably test share the story a lot. So if you don't like sharing it, do the quick version. Or if you like sharing it, do the long version. But from from the accident to now or or how like what is how do you tell people when they say what happened is it it's got to be a common question i'm gathering right yeah it's like rote memorization at this point yeah yeah so i was a senior at binghamton university in upstate new york and i was on a ski trip with some friends we were going to vermont to a, a mountain called stratton which i've been to so many times it's like where i learned to ski by the mountain I've skied at most in my life, like with my family and stuff. And I really have no recollection of the day itself, except maybe getting picked up around sunrise um, by two of my friends. And the plan was to meet my brother and his friends at the mountain. And I never got to meet up with them because I, um, one of the first like runs of the day, again, this is like what I've been told because I don't remember anything, but I had a really bad fall and um, I was basically at the, the medical tent and they couldn't find me. And then eventually they were able to find me and I was airlifted to Dartmouth Hitchcock Hospital where I was in the ICU for 17 days where they told me I had a C1, C2 spinal cord injury and paralyzed from the neck down and unable to breathe on my own. Um, and then after 17 days, they sent me to a specialized spinal cord injury hospital in Boston. It's called Spalding. I was there four and a half months. That's where I like got off a feeding tube. 
and I started to breathe on something called diaphragmatic pacer, so I don't need to be on a ventilator full time. Um, and I just did a lot of like OT and PT there, and then I was discharged and sent to another hospital on Long Island, closer to where I live, and I was there four months. And I was discharged and sent to an assisted living because my house was being renovated. So I was in the hospital nine months. I call it my gestation period. And uh, I was in this assisted living for just one month. Then my house was renovated by actually a TV show called George the Rescue. They put in an elevator and a ramp and basically everything I need. And I've been living there ever since at home. So you were going to the skiing and then like it turned into a nine month journey until you got home or uh, comfort like it, from leaving there that it was just hospitals for nine months around. That's right. Yeah. Like I left college one day for a trip. I never came back, man. Yeah. It's, it's remarkable that you have high spirits and are able to talk about it, but also I feel like it has to be the way you have to be able to cope with it and uh, turn it into a positive. My most impressed with your painting. Like, how did that happen? How did you, is that something in like the recovery programs? Like, hey, here's skills people learn that have this injury. Yeah, it was part of, it was partially that and partially like, we need you to start trying to move your neck oh. and build some strength. So like, try to paint or try to, at first they tried me to write letters and I couldn't do any of it. And I was super frustrated. And then they had me start to paint a little bit. And my neck was like, I was getting more movement as time went on. And then in the second hospital, that's where I really started to enjoy it and got a lot better at it. And uh, now I do it a lot at home. And I have a little Etsy store called Made by Mouth. And I do mostly like landscapes, mountainscapes, ocean. Yeah, they're great. I mean, I can't paint with my hands at all. So I'm jealous. Do you think there's anyone out there that could? Do you think if you taught me to paint with my mouth, I could figure it out, and then I would be better? Do you think there's anyone painting with their hands and you're like, you should try your mouth, you could be better at this? I definitely think people could do it. Like, I, they're like, that's so hard to do it with your mouth. I feel like if you just, like, try it out with, like, the adaptive mouse stick I had, which, like, if they tried it, it they, people would be able to do it. Like, I'm not an artist. No, that's not true. You're selling art. I guess. I guess now I'm an artist. Yeah. I was an artist before, I guess, and I... I think I'm just more so like creative and I have like the discipline to, to teach myself to be good at it. But I think people could do it for sure. Did you paint before? No, I like to doodle here and there. Like okay. just like maybe funny things or whatever, but that wasn't like, I was definitely into more sports. Like I was very focused on sports and very focused on my studies and I never really thought about art. Yeah. Well, is there sports? Well, is there sports that you can play with? I was trying to think of a mouth sport like ping pong, but that would be weird. Is there any alter sport alternative activities that get presented to you? I've people seen that have people do sip and puff skiing. So they have a straw in their mouth, similar to the way I operate my wheelchair. And like they could steer with um, their mouth, the, the, the skis. But like there's someone behind them, like making sure they don't die. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. But they get the feeling of kind of like going down the mountain and, and that that's cool. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I've gone to wheelchair softball and they'll have people who like can't move their arms, like run the bases. Like if someone hits it and I would, you know, go to first base, but I haven't actually participated. Okay. When, um, I'm going to go a couple more of your posts that stand out. When you posted about the, this is your favorite beach because they have a ramp down to the ocean that has like, you know, sometimes you, you hear things and then you're like, it just pops in your brain all the time. I like judge beaches now uh, over something that I would have never noticed or really understood before. And I'm like mad at my beach town because I don't think they have any accessibility anywhere in town. But when you posted that, it kind of blew me, <clears throat> blew me away of like, I never, yeah. Like even just going down and feeling the breeze. So you posted that they have like a sidewalk that you can. Yeah. Like concrete. Yeah. Which is, most places don't. They have this like flimsy rubber mat. And I'm worried that if I go off a little bit, I'll be stuck in the sand and we won't be able to get me out. Yeah, because there was uh, someone growing up that had a wheelchair that would go to the beach, but they have the big, the giant big wheels like on the sand. So I guess it's a whole, yeah. and they had to get pushed. So, but yeah, that blew, that blew my mind too in a different way. Like it wasn't funny. I was just like, whoa, that is uh, like a whole new world. And I felt mad at my beach because they have like this ramp, but they're not getting that. And I couldn't imagine not being, you don't think about, obviously I don't think about, people that are not paralyzed don't think about anything because it's not a reality unless you know someone or you see it, which your account's doing for a lot of people 
and with humor, but also I was like, feeling the ocean breeze is nice, and that's not really accessible unless you have a pier or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I love going there. It's really nice. So social media is like, is that your you have painting and social media as the outlets to kind of just entertain yourself, but they're becoming bigger. Like your social media is huge. Uh, and you have an audience now, does that feel odd as you know, I did that as well. And we work in the social media landscape, but did you, you wouldn't never guess that would be an outcome. Right. Like I never thought I'd be like be doing social media. Like before this, I was like, I'm going to go to med school and speak Spanish and all that. And now it's like, this is such a different lifestyle, but I do really like it. Yeah. It's like a great way of self-expression as, as is the painting. And I have so much fun with it. And I love just like seeing people's reactions to it, whether good or bad. I just like seeing how people respond to it. And I like, you know, informing people about my situation, but also like making people laugh. Are there specific replies that mean the most to you? Like when we, when you have people that social media has bad, like you said, but, and people complain about the bad all the time, but there is such good that comes from it. Like some of the personal messages we get, just people that enjoy the content or make you keep going. But for you, I'm, gathering there's a whole community of people that reach out that inspire or keep going or you know you're like an example of someone who is making the best of a bad hand they were dealt yeah i do get like some comments where it's like your account has really helped me i have you know an autoimmune disease or i have this disability or this injury and it's made me realize like life can go on or they'll say like i showed my account to my sister who has an injury all the time it is like a caregiver who comes across my account We'll show it to like whoever they're taking care of. So I, I like seeing those comments. Yeah, it was powerful. It's like uh, having a good, not just for yourself. Like a, a lot of social media is self-serving in a way because you want the gratis, the like the likes and the views and like I don't ever deny that. But when you actually see people enjoying it or changing someone's mind about something or helping someone in a similar situation, which you are doing tenfold that any like what we do we just make people laugh about baseball like you're really if there's anyone especially like younger or older or what that has this injury they can almost be like look like this is there's a way to make the best out of this to make people laugh and to enjoy the day-to-day i guess um which has to feel good and- yeah it does it is very gratifying and um i mean just like you you guys make people happy make people laugh i try to do the same thing and I guess that's like what a lot of social media is, but it is very like rewarding when a video does well, especially one that like I'm very proud of or or whatever. Do you have any relatives that just don't understand the humor behind it? They're like, my grandparents like really don't get it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Or my dad, my dad doesn't get it at all. But it's funny you brought up the one where it's like me and my brother and it's like, where are they siblings? Where are they now? It's like gay and paralyzed. And my dad just says to me, he's like, you know, everyone in my office watches your video. <laughs> he's like a lawyer and like everyone in his office is like 50 plus. This is funny. It's probably good for your parents too, to see you laughing about it, even if they don't get the jokes, but that is, there's always, I was going to, I was laughing about like, um, you know, there's always people that can laugh at themselves and then people that get upset with you for laughing at yourself like no it takes it seriously i was wondering if you had anyone grandparents makes a lot of sense so I yeah it. my dad's like that's very dark <laughs> like what's the point yeah <laughs> yeah that's that adds up i interrupt that conversation to tell you about DraftKings. after 162 games it's finally time for some october baseball get in on all the playoff action at DraftKings sportsbook from same game parlays to live betting to odds boost and so much more DraftKings has you covered until a champ is crowned right now all new customers who bet just five dollars will instantly get 200 in bonus bets when you use code meeting Stay in on the action and use your 200 in bonus bets to bet anytime homers on DraftKings. So just go there, bet the Mets to win and the over, okay? You put $5 on that, you get $200 right away. Use the $200 to sprinkle that $1 a time on Judge to Homer. Math. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code MEETING and bet just $5 on any wager and get 200 bonus bets instantly. That's promo code MEETING only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Back to the conversation. Do you do you have any bigger plans with social media? Is it just enjoy it, uh, keep going? Do you want to grow like the being on the internet and having your own account into something bigger? I definitely would like to like work with brands. Like I don't want to do that right now. I just sort of 
post videos. I have a following, but I don't actually work with brands to like make any sort of real money. Like I may make a little bit of money from TikTok, but that's really it. But I would like to like be able to um, maybe promote like accessibility of like places near me or even like if so, a company sent me like something that's made for people with disabilities, I could like review it or something like that. Like I would love to do that. Yeah. All right. We'll put this clip out. So people just start sending you everything. Yeah. Paint logos for people. Or like, you know, uh, for if a company's out there that needs a custom painting, then you combine two things. That's true, yeah. 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 I have done a lot of custom paintings. People will message me on Etsy and stuff and be like, I took this photo in Nepal. Like, can you paint it for me and I'll paint it. And I actually just shipped something to someone in Australia. Ooh, where in Australia? I lived there for a couple of years. Or what did you paint? Just a scenery? It was Nepal... I think it was Everest. He's like, it's the earliest sunrise on the planet because oh. of the elevation. It was a really nice photo, yeah. Okay. Has anyone ever asked you to paint something and you're just like, nah, don't want to? My cleaning lady <laughs> is like, can you paint a picture of my son? I'm like, I can't. <laughs> like, I really can't paint like fine details like that. It's like, what are his favorite colors? I'll just make something with his favorite colors. And then she said they're red and blue. And then I forgot about it and haven't thought about it till now. <laughs> this, was, this was probably a year ago. So, <laughs> uh, There's a note here that says, um, you've met a lot of unlikely, you've made a lot of unlikely friends. And it's, I, I, I guess, who, what are the unlikely friends you've made? I would say a lot of people with disabilities, but then like one story that I like, these people aren't disabled, but I was in just a coffee shop with my parents and they were wearing these bracelets that say rally for Rebecca, which is like my slogan or whatever. And they're green bracelets and they're like, oh, did you guys just come from an event or something? It's like this older couple, like in their sixties and we're like, oh no. And then my mom proceeds to tell them my life story. I like tune it out because I've heard it too many times. And then the woman asked me, she's like, well, what? she's like, did you go to college? I was like, yeah, I was studying Spanish and chemistry. And she's like, oh, I speak Spanish if you ever want to practice. So we started talking once a week in Spanish over Zoom. And now we're like very close. We hang out with this couple like all the, a lot, all the time. And like we've gone to movies, gone to dinner with them. And it's like, they're just so sweet. And like, I would have ever met them had I not had my injury. And like, we're very close to them now. And they're just great people. So like something like that is just like a random story. Like, yeah, that's cool. You don't really meet people in coffee shops these days. I don't know. Yeah, you have more like face to face interaction, especially all your time in uh, the recovery programs. There had to be some nurses or just regular other patients that do you still ha interact with, or because that that that's pretty vulnerable time. I'm sure they have to be a big impact in that process. And then, do you have any relationships with people from uh, like nurses or care for, from the assisted living place? So when I was in the second hospital on Long Island, I had a nurse named Lucy, and we got really, really close. And she ended up signing on to be a nurse for me once I got home. On top of her full-time job, she worked with me once a week, which was great. And, like, we're really close still. She still works with me. We do lots of, like, fun things together. Um, actually, I had dinner with her last night. Like, so, yeah. like, I feel like she's, like, family at this point. And it's just, she's also someone that I never would have met otherwise. So I met her, and then when I was in the first hospital, like right when I got there, um, this was so new and stuff, and I was like so starved for like social interaction. Then there happened to be a 21-year-old boy living next door to me named Toby, and him and I became friends, and we had like literally nothing in common. He's from like a rural town in Maine, and like didn't care about school, and like we just wouldn't watch a single show together. Like we didn't have anything in common at all, but he just became a friend. And he ended up passing away, so we don't keep in touch anymore, obviously. But, like, he was someone that really helped me get through my hospital stay because it was, like, all right, some sense of normalcy is having one person my age to interact with. Yeah, well, that's sweet and sad. Sorry about him passing away. When, when you get diagnosed with the injury, I mean, what is... My brain was like, I would want to Google search it and know everything, but you couldn't at the time. So you're just it's gotta be so hard to process and understand it. Like I like learning things for myself and you, you're in college, you got your degree. I'm sure you would like searching and learning, but everything has to be told to you at that point. So how long does it take for you to fully grasp like all the information you wanted to know about the injury and the timetable and all that? I guess it took like many months. I feel like I'm honestly still learning things, but at first I was like, just very numb to the information, like didn't really sink in. 
And then, like, as time went on, especially being in rehab and seeing all these other people with a spinal cord injury in that specialized hospital, like, that's when it really sunk in. You start to learn a lot more, and, like, the OTs are teaching you things, and the doctors, and um, speech therapists, like, all that. Are there, excuse me if these are dumb questions, but I'm just curious, are there, like, your injury was C1 to C2? Is that, are there common or less common, or are there major differences on on types of spinal cord injury where you would, you would seek out, or you could, you could like meet other people or communities of people that have the same injury and then you all talk, or is it like all spinal cord injuries is a community? So Does that makes sense. Yeah. So my injury is very rare. Okay. It's the highest point on the spinal cord. So it's like, I guess the most debilitating. So I don't really know that many people who have my injury also apparently because of like the anatomy behind it is harder to damage the spinal cord at that C1, C2 junction. So lucky me, I did it. <laughs> and and so I only know like two or three people with my injury. A lot of people have like a C5, C6 injury. Like I made a joke in the hospital. I'm like, C5 is so trendy right now. <laughs> like everybody can move their arms a little bit, but not like their wrists or their hands is typically like what a C5 is. Um, so, but like, I guess... As a community, it is mostly just like the upper level quadriplegic. So like C6, C5 and up is like the people I know and interact with the most. It's, it fig you figures there would be like some sort of place to meet and talk and compare and contrast. Or I would be desperate for that if like to find other people going through it just to find the relatability uh, of it all. Does any one of those see you guys see your videos and they're just jealous that you get to be so funny about it uh, and like have or are, are creating something so positive out of it i don't know if they're jealous but i've definitely met people with spinal cord injury through my social media like i met this girl laura who has the same injury as me she lives in michigan and she sometimes also does like the dark humor but her videos are mostly focused on like educating people like uplifting people and she's really nice easy to talk to um i've met this one girl who's like very, very good at mouth painting, like way better than I am. And she, oh, wow. I met her once. Um, so yeah, I've been able to meet like a bit of people through, but no one's, no one's told me they're jealous at least. <laughs> I'm sure they would be. I mean, I'm not paralyzed, but I'm jealous of your ability to turn that into something good. It's like a reminder of any time uh, you're just, I'm sure you have bad days, but it's, like your your page makes me laugh and also is like, okay, like if she can get through that and have this attitude, why shouldn't anyone else be able to change uh, the perception of their reality or just like be able to accept it and adapt and overcome it? So I, I think it's awesome. If anyone has not checked out your page, I would go watch it. And it's genuinely very funny. Um, Thank you. Not paralyzed, just lazy. <laughs> one word on tiktok <laughs> yeah that's pretty good so did you change the name to it because it's your it's your it's your uh instagram like from before the injury as well yeah so my instagram stayed the same tiktok at first was just my name and then i was like i want to change it to something funny or something that like indicates that i'm injured or disabled so i put so i did i don't know what the other option was but i decided to do not paralyzed just lazy and then in the bio just put too lazy to move. Uh, how many followers do you have on TikTok? Like 109,000. And around a little like 90,000 on Instagram? On Instagram, yeah. Was there a wave? Is there like one video where you can pinpoint and you're like, this blew it, this blew it up? Yeah. So on TikTok, there was a stitch that I made. So this one guy was at the gym and he made a video and it said, there's nothing worse than when your headphones die at the gym. So I just cut from him saying that to just a, me just sitting there in my power chair. I feel like you could search those words and just make that video over and over and over again about people complaining about yeah anything. Yeah, I found a few of them. Like one guy goes, there's nothing worse than being skinny fat. And <laughs> I just cut it to me. So, but that video literally gained me like 20, at least 20,000 followers from one video, which is crazy. Nuts. From there, it just got bigger and bigger. Now, do you, are you like, oh shit, I got to come up with more ideas or are they just keep coming naturally and you're having fun with it? I feel like it comes and goes. Some weeks I'm like, I have so many ideas and so many things to post. And some weeks I'm like, I have nothing. But there's always something for me to just like get in front of the camera and say, I guess. So even if I have nothing, I could just like talk for a minute or whatever. 
Yeah, that's the thing. That's the hardest thing is like you just have to keep it moving. Even if like now the way Instagram and TikTok are is just just post something and it'll be it that won't do well. But then like we changed recently to post four a day on my personal. And if if five do bad, that's fine because the six might do well or seven out of eight might not. But that one eight will do so well that I'll gain a ton of followers. It's just the algorithm changed from like it used to be everything had to be quality. And everything had to be good. And now it's just like, nope, just toss it out there. Just yeah. like put it all out there. Yeah. yeah. And that was hard to grasp at first because I wanted everything to do well. And I felt pressure to like make every video super funny and super good. But now I'm like, I'm just going to put whatever I want out there. Yeah. It's my account. I can do what I want. And some videos that I would never expect to do well, do well. And also things that do very well on Instagram don't do well on TikTok and vice versa. Like it's, yeah. it's very rarely... Um, it's very rare that they both do the well. Just- TikTok and YouTube shorts are synced, we've found. And we don't know why. But if it does good on TikTok, then like two weeks later, it'll blow up on YouTube shorts. That's interesting. And we're like, how does that, how is that, how does that work? There's got to be something that both algorithms like a lot. I'm not even on YouTube shorts. I keep saying like I should really just like get somebody to just post everything onto my YouTube shorts yeah. for me. Yeah. Just. Because why yeah. not? Have someone, what? Yeah, next time someone asks uh, for a painting or something, just say oh, you have to repost ten shorts for me. Yeah, like just that. download it. Get rid of the watermark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Instagram is interesting. Oh, well, I was gonna say when you have one that you don't think is gonna do well, just schedule it, and then you don't know when it goes out, and then you don't chase the replies. Like if I hit publish myself, then I know I'm gonna watch for like an hour. And I'm gonna look at like what people are saying. And if I'm like, I don't know if this one's going to do what, I'll schedule it for like an hour later. And then I don't know that's out there. And I don't know what people are saying. Yeah. Yeah. I usually try, try to look when I post something. I'm like, throw my phone across the yeah. room. Is easy, is, that's good. Because I it took me like four years to figure that out. I was like, this is bad. People don't like it. Then I'm like fighting the first two people. And then like two hours later, everyone's like, oh, that's good. And I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't need to get so emotional. Do you ever have people like come defend you in the comments? Yeah. Well, we have an awesome community of like, cause we built it so organically that we have like our core people that will help us out, which is nice. It's nice to have that. It's a lot of people that listen to this show because you don't want to fight your own battles. No one wins an internet fight ever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you have people fighting for you. Cause if anyone's rude, they're just like terrible part of society. Yeah. I get a lot of like bizarre comments. People, will say mean things a lot of a lot of people do come to me especially sarah who uh, works here as a designer but she's my good friend and she'll come defend me in the comments or my friends will comment back things but yeah some people can just say whatever they want because they could hide behind the, the phone yep and they could be anonymous it's like it's always like user 1296 who's yep. writing the worst things you know jake always tells me that could be the guy screaming on the subway He's like, just picture any anonymous account, if they don't have their face or name, as the guy screaming on the subway. And that's the same version of the internet, where it's like, you're not going to take offense, or you're not going to put any care in what they say. Right, like, I don't know you, so I'm not going to take it personally. When I was just starting out, and people would give me shit, and if there was someone out there that was constantly just being a dick, I would follow them back, and just see what they post for like four days, and I'd be like, oh my god, I don't care about what you say at all. And then I would like rid it for me. But there's too many now to do that. When I was few, it's like, yeah, it's really not worth like, you know, because if you saw someone you knew posting like troll comments on the internet, you'd be like, like, Mary, what are you doing? Like, that's pathetic. So it's always people that you probably would never even associate with. They're just right. They're just kids. Yeah. It is like the equivalent of like the lady yelling nothing in Bryant Park yeah. or whatever. Yes. But it's, Either way, it's more engagement on the post and it boosts the post. Yeah. So it's like comment all you want, you know. And then I could also, if it's funny, I could res- respond to it on the video. Yeah, and then you do Or I could make a video of like screenshots of funny comments. Like the video of my brother and I got such funny comments because a lot of people were writing like fruit and a vegetable. Or, like <laughs> you know, that, that produce department. Or, like pretty there, good. There goes grandkids. But like, which is not even true. But like the comments are just hysterical. Like one person wrote, One's disabled and one's paralyzed. Ooh. And like my brother and I just reading them and like laughing so hard. My, my parents even like will still bring up those comments. Those are the ones your dad didn't like? He, he was like, uh. He's like, yeah, everybody in my office sees those comments. That's funny. Imagine yeah. they were the ones leaving the comments that I'm giving. 
it's for anyone watching the shirt I have that says, what if we kissed? I was going to wear it today, but I left it at the warehouse. I wear it all the time at Sarah made for um, fundraiser. Yeah, but it's yeah. a great shirt. Yeah. I don't even know what does the bottom say. Uh, JK. Uh, JK on less. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, you know, Fayao, hi Fayao was probably watching. Didn't he come up to you, Maddie, and say like, what does that shirt mean that Jimmy wears? Because <laughs> he like, can only see the top. Um, that's a good shirt. I feel very cool when I wear that because Sarah makes like young designs. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very cool shirt. This was, yeah, she sold it at my annual 5K fundraiser. We have a lot of fundraisers because like the cost of care for spinal cord injury is like insurmountable. And so she ended up making those shirts and sold all. She At first she was, I think, worried she wasn't going to sell enough and she sold so many that I know so many people that are like still wanting shirts. And so. That's awesome. Are they still up? Okay. What what they else so do you have to shout out? Did we get everything? That, what's the Etsy store called? Made by mouth and then paralyzed or not paralyzed, just lazy. Not paralyzed, just lazy. Yeah. Is that in that's Instagram and TikTok? That's just TikTok. Okay. So Instagram is just my name. Well, it's Rebecca underscore Colton, but you can just find my name. Yeah. Yeah. So I suggest everyone go watch a bunch because you'll laugh and then show them to someone you know won't get it. Like I like my aunt or my mom. I just showed her one. She's like, wait, what? What? And that was kind of double funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like the threshold is like 50, like in the fifties, <laughs> like we're at the age group. That's like, that's where it starts to get blurry, whether they're going to, they're going to understand it or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Hopefully we just keep being able to laugh uh, as everyone gets younger and younger. Or do we turn 50 and all of a sudden we don't find it funny? I think we won't get what we won't understand the younger there. crowd. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. true. But I went to Costa Rica as part of like a study abroad in college. And I made like a good amount of friends. This was all before my accident, of course. And so like, I'm just wondering, like when I post these things and they see it, aren't they like, aren't they confused? Like nobody's messaged me or anything. Like they, they just all of a sudden they're like, oh, this girl I was in Costa Rica with is now like in this power chair and like making these videos i don't know it's just i wonder like what's going through there especially the ones that don't know english it's like do they get what's going on i don't know yeah yeah i wonder they just probably feel odd or because it's you telling the story basically through humor but they're just like yeah it gotta be weird because it was it's just all of a sudden one post right for people that don't know your family don't know your friends that's how they found out from that post it's kind of a right. crazy uh, it's funny, but it was a crazy way to find out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in and chatting. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that we you wanted to or any questions you had for uh, me or, or us or anything? I guess any like tips or advice, like how did you grow this to be something so big from, I guess, what, like it had to start small, right? Yeah. Started as just a hobby, just me and Jake doing a Yankees podcast and I was desperate to do like make it like a living and do more. And I didn't even know what it would become or could become. It just kept going. But yeah, I, at that point I just did like, I just posted so much and started so many shows. And then the biggest lesson was learning when to refine it and be like, that's not working. And this is doing very well. So stop doing that. We still sometimes struggle with that. Cause you're like, but I like doing that. But Biggest thing I did was interact like with anyone who commented was I would respond for like two years of my DMS. If you, if you Instagram DM me or Twitter DM me, like I would respond, be in constant conversation. And those people I had to turn it off cause it got too big and too negative, but those people I still know by name, like they'll come to the office and they just were people that listened and enjoyed. So they don't even feel like, we don't use the word fans. We'd say community members or audience, but they just feel like part of the community. And there's a lot of people like that, that we know. Um, and that feel like they know us because I would just, I'm still in constant conversations on DM. Like there's like people that are grandfathered into like Reddit DMs and like I chat with them there or there's Instagram, but that's how I built it. I think it was also just a constant reminder of like, there's people that enjoy this. And once someone puts me on their schedule to listen to a podcast. I was like, I can never botch that and like start missing episodes or take it off. So for the first three years, that's how we did it. We were just like dedicated and treated everyone that joined and wanted to interact. Like they were just a friend hanging out. And then we just kept 
going and trying new things. And I like the creativity of it. So as soon as I get to a point where it feels like I'm not doing anything new, I just like need to find another avenue. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But yeah, on social media now, it's way more like I was saying, just post, just like post a ton because the algorithm is in more control than anything. Like, you know, one you think is amazing and hilarious might not work. And then the one you just threw out, like I did a video the other day and I didn't even use a good mic. I didn't even use a good camera. And it's got like 6 million views on YouTube. And it's like the most watched short of the year. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I was like, didn't want to make it, but we just threw it out there. And all of a sudden that's like the best one. And there's others that I'm like, this is so funny and well-crafted. And I put a lot of work into it and it's like, nah. So yeah, I have no idea. But just, just post, make sure you enjoy it. Like if you're not making yourself laugh, then it's not worth it in the right. end, right? It's, that's, that's also, it's like I do content and we do content just because it'll make us laugh. And then sometimes that hits big, but also it grows that niche audience. Like jokes are never supposed to be found funny by 100% of people. Otherwise, it'd be not funny. It'd be like the corny sitcoms with laugh tracks and all that. Yeah. So you always, I always say you always want 50% of the people to not get it. And then, the, and then the other 50, it hits even harder. Yeah. So just make yourself laugh. Yeah. I feel like there's like a fine line between like what you want to post and what will necessarily do well also. Yeah. I post my art videos and like they get no views and then like a dark humor video will do it well. Yeah. But that's, that's fine because we have like, if I post the breakdown clip on my Instagram, uh, it'll do well. But I don't want it to just be a breakdown account. So Ryan, who runs it for me now, but even as we started it, I just was like, no, we're going to do this. And I'm going to do TV shows sometimes. I'm going to do this. And if it doesn't get views, that's fine. But you know that I'm doing it. And you can never pinpoint and say, I wish this was still just breakdowns. Like, I wish this was still just dark humor. It's like, hey, it's been the other way. Scroll down. I've been doing this forever. And it makes you happy. And you just got to get it out there. And then eventually, who knows? It'll, it might micro and you're selling art so that's fine like the value there isn't in the in the in the views it's in the sales and community of people sending it to you true and there are certain people who do appreciate those videos even though it's not the majority like there are people who are like oh i watched that video of your art and yeah loved it, so. yeah each each like category that you do or want to start make sure you know its value beforehand so this show isn't our biggest viewed show um, the value in this is community building and meeting people and like, it's like a depth. So we don't need this to be like, get a million views or get a hundred thousand views. It'd be awesome if it did, but that doesn't mean it's not as valuable as something that does. It's just a different value. Does that make sense? So like the painting is a different value than the views, the dark humor views. Like those are the driving source, but what if those don't allow you to do other stuff, then they're not worth True. even doing it. Yeah. So keep the variety. Yeah. For you and for different values. If there's, if there's like a style of video you make that leads to like a different community, finding out uh, uh, who you are and interacting. If there's posts that lead to sponsorship, then that's a different value, you know, than you. So that's something we've kind of worked with, with a lot of people and I'm still trying to like, before you start a show, what's the biggest value this brings Okay, then grade it on that. That's kind of, that's, that's pretty decent because everyone in the public just says, that show sucks, doesn't get any views. And we're like, well, it, it's led us to some really good sponsorship deals. It's led us to some really good like community events. Like there's other value it brings. Right, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. All right, good to know. <laughs> yeah, well, if you have any other questions, reach out at any time or have Sarah ask me because I like talking about all that stuff. I appreciate you coming in. No, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, cool. All right, and to end the episode, I have a poem here from one of my favorite poets, po poets, Roger Granite. Who I don't really know about. I just found his book in a bookstore once in New Jersey, and he's a very East Coast uh, poet. We've read these a long time ago on here, but I haven't read one of his poems since having a daughter. Yep. So I figure I'll read this dad's and daughter's poem now from uh, this book is called The World's a Small Town. Okay, goes like this. Diapered and dem demure. You Google that word for me. I kind of know what it means around context. 
Reserved, modest, and shy. Yes. Okay. Typically used of a woman. That seems sexist and also doesn't describe my daughter, Claire. She is not any of those things. She's fiery and feisty. Diapered and demure. She coos up at me with her coy, toothless grin. A two-month-old mouth filled with seductive sounds and slurred smiles. And as she drools out newborn nighttime lyrics, I am held powerless in her shy, tiny grasp. Captured by this steamy songstress and the melody of every dad's forever little girls. I'm going to be honest. I didn't like that one. There's a lot of words in there that I wouldn't, I wouldn't do in, in the dads and daughters, but it's a different time. So we're just going to have to find another one. Okay, because yep. we can't. I didn't like that. I like every poem of his besides that one. Uh, Trick or treat. It's October. Yeah, it is. Trick or treat. The night explodes with orange twinklings of candle filled pumpkins and breeze blown cardboard skeletons and sounds of sneakers and giggles shuffling through mounds of curled spent leaves, remnants of autumn's rainbow showers, with trailing tired parents waiting for the witches and the white-sheeted kids to finally go home and sleep, so they can drink hot spice cider, recalling the explosion of yesterday Halloweens when the candy bars were bigger and they were smaller. James wants to be a witch really bad for Halloween. Okay. A bitch! A bitch! I wanted to be Bam Bam and Claire to be Pebbles, but it's not going to happen. You wouldn't be Fred or Barney. No, but he loves having a bat and he kind of the size of Bam Bam mm. and Claire looks like Pebbles, just strawberry blonde hair. So it's like perfect and they're not next year. They'll be too old, but he's pretty dead set on being a, a witch. Mm. However, that's going to look. I mean, you could do two. send him to school as a witch i watched halloween town three times over the weekend it's good james likes it yeah it's a great movie he likes that they call uh uh they call him chocolate bar who uh the bad guys the alec bar uh, yeah what's his name alec bar calabar 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 yeah yeah they call him chocolate bar yeah the main girl calls him like hey chocolate bar he's all black and calabar chocolate bar i guess i guess yeah he's, yeah he's dressed in all black sure yeah he 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 likes that all right thanks for watching see you guys later goodbye